On this week's episode, it's official. Peloton hits Australia and Sessions is now on the platform. And will Bex Gentry be going to the Summer Olympics and much, much more? Welcome to the Pelo Buddy TV podcast, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. Here are your hosts, Amanda Siegel and John Pruitt. Welcome to Pelo Buddy TV episode 30, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. I am your host, John Pruitt, and as always, I am joined by Amanda Siegel. How are you, Amanda? I'm great, John. How are you? Doing good. Another week done and dusted, as they say. Done and dusted. Wow. It's like, it's flying. These weeks are just flying by. It is absolutely insane how quickly. And we got a um, a taste of spring this week on yeah, the East Coast. It's nice. um, wasn't it fantastic? I mean, I know, it really six, was. It's got to be 60 yeah. out right now here in Michigan. So uh, all the snow gorgeous. is melted. Can't complain. And we're getting back to some norm- I know, some normality. We're kind of feeling the air. I think that um, certainly um, for us folks here in the, in the in the states, there seems to be some you know push towards a little bit of normality coming back to normal for all of us through this pandemic. With um, you know more and more folks getting vaccinated and um, feeling like there's somewhat of a light at the end of this tunnel, right? Yeah, businesses reopening. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, I can, yeah. I can see it. So, John, um, you know, before we always say this, before we get started with the news, we um, always like to remind folks how they can keep in touch with everything to do with Pedal Buddy, all our contents uh, across all of our platforms. Of course, every episode, as well as um, breaking news, although there hasn't been much of that lately, but it is released on our YouTube channel. So just hit the subscribe button in the uh, bottom right hand corner and um, make sure that you. Um, hit notify so that you never miss an episode yep and if you prefer to also listen to us in traditional podcast format when you're on the go we're on all podcast platforms including itunes uh, apple so be sure to hit subscribe also click notifications so you never miss an episode and please leave us a review we'd love to hear how we're doing if you have any feedback how we can improve the show or Um, Any recommendations for future guest interviews? We would love to hear uh, your comments and your feedback. For sure. And of course, Facebook and Instagram, you know, we're all over there too. So just search Hello Buddy, like, follow us on those platforms um, for all the latest news. So I guess, John, it's time to um, get on with the show. Dive right in. First, let's do a rundown of the latest Pillow news. Well, folks, it's official. Peloton has now publicly announced that they are going down under and will be in the Australian market um, with a launch date set for the second half of 2021. Um, you guys um, will certainly be able to um, make make purchases either online or um, in the stores, um, which Peloton have said that they will have across Australian cities, specifically in Sydney and Melbourne. And for those of you that watch our show regularly, we have been all over this over the last few weeks um, as we had gotten amazing inside information from Bob Tremor, our trusty Bob Tremor, um, and we he had posted a lot of this on Twitter and um, etc. So we have been reporting it. Um, they uh, and we've spoken about Sydney specifically. We knew that they were going to be opening up in Martin Place and Bondi Junction, um, but it does look like it is going to be in other cities in um, in Australia too. Um, The Aussies will be following the cues of the US and UK instructors for now. Um, There is no word yet as to whether or not there will be um, Australian instructors or even if they will have production done in Australia. For right now, that has not been um, brought to anyone's attention. Um, So I guess that will have to wait. Maybe they'll hire um, Australian-speaking instructors in the UK or in the US um, just so that they can feel... I'm not going to attempt to do any accents here, John. You can certainly <laughs> want to, can if you want to. But um, although I have to say, with my South African accent, a lot of folks do sometimes think that I am an Aussie myself. Um, but they definitely have more. Okay, there I go. 
<laughs> they do have more of a drawl when they talk. They, I always say that the Aussies kind of speak with a lazy tongue. Um, I think there was a little bit of cockney that may have gone in there too. <laughs> the, um, the Australian um, website, though, has been launched and um, folks can head over to onepeloton.com.au um, to take a peek. Um, John, pricing for the original bike is set at $2,895 Australian dollars, and the Bike Plus has a price tag of $3,695. Um, the All Access membership will be $59 Australian uh, dollars. So, um, you know, it kind of fluctuates, obviously, with the different rate of exchanges, etc. But that is, yeah. in fact, on um, online, and folks can, can pull that up off the, off the website. Um, to note, too, jo- jo- John, it, it seems that Peloton has gone ahead and filed an application, um, actually, with the Federal Court of Australia to scrub all trademarks for the term spinning. Um, again, we had reported previously here on Pelo Buddy um, that, Pelo, that Peloton had been in a legal battle with um, Mad Dog Athletics um, over the trademark, and they are still in dispute here in the U.S. with no uh, resolution quite as yet. Um, and of course, that is for the word and the usage of the word spinning. Um, it seems though that Peloton had wanted to get a head start in the Australian market, so I guess we'll keep an eye out for where that goes. Uh, so yeah, Australia is out there, folks. <laughs> next on the uh, next on the map. Wow, big things to come. Exciting. Well, and in, in other um, exciting news, we uh, we we got the sessions feature back for the bike and tread uh, a month or God, maybe was it back in November? I want to say now, actually, yeah. a little further yeah. back. Peloton was testing the feature sessions uh, on the bike and tread where you could organize a an on-demand ride, basically start with a fresh leaderboard of people that joined, you know, it would, I guess it would be every five minutes, there'd be a new sessions um, class of, of, of on-demand content. So they've brought that back now as a permanent feature and it has been integrated with the new schedule feature on, on the iOS app. So when you go into, and I che- I tested this out on my bike and it actually didn't work for me. So maybe I need to update my bike. But um, when you go to schedule a class for, for uh, classes longer than 20 minutes on the app, on the iOS app, when you go to schedule something, uh, a class, when you schedule the date, you go to your bike or your tread, there should be a pop-up as we've shown on the Pelo Buddy website with screenshots, there should be a pop-up uh, when that class time is approaching, um, and then it can be taken as a sessions with a, a fresh leaderboard, almost like a live ride with all new riders. Now I tried it on the tread and bike. It didn't pop up for me. So me neither. I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe they're, maybe they haven't fully rolled out that update to everyone. Um, interesting interesting so. yeah John you know what it it didn't pop up for me either and in fact just on Friday I did a uh, a tribe ride with the um, Leanne's yes to you crew and Ben's army and um, it was frustrating because I actually went on so I had done the same thing I scheduled it um, on my yeah. phone um, and then went on to the bike and it wasn't showing up so I went into it um, and only after I went into it I was able to you know go on as a session but unfortunately, there needs to be a lot more education from Peloton or even if folks are watching Pelo Buddy, we'll certainly educate you on how to do it. Um, yeah. there, were only, there were only three of us that joined the session. Everybody <laughs> else just kind of went on normally, uh, which was so silly. So, of course, you didn't see those riders. I only saw the two other girls that were riding in the session with me. Um, right. which was a little bit frustrating. So that's something I guess it needs to be some education there. I think it's going to be a fantastic feature once it, it is rolled out, you know, appropriately and everybody knows how to use it properly. Yeah, it's still great to have it back because I know everyone was clamoring for it when, when it went away. So uh, I know I'm going to like doing it when I get up early in the morning to do a non-live class and I want to have that sort of competitive feeling of a live ride when it's still just on demand, you know, getting that a leaderboard where everybody's, you know, starting at the same starting point. Yeah. hundred percent. 
Um, so in other news, uh, we had a, a big announcement this past week from Tread instructor Bex Gentry. So she announced she is training to compete in the Marathon Olympic Trials for a chance to represent Great Britain at the Tokyo Olympics in 2021. Um, so the initial announcement actually came during a pre-recorded outdoor run that was released last Monday morning, but she went on to announce on Instagram this past week. And she, it was really sweet because in her Instagram story, she got all choked up and got real emotional how you know proud she is and how you know she wants to um, to represent Great Britain, hopefully you know to to make it make the team and compete in the Olympics. Um, so the, the Olympic marathon time trial, it's scheduled, uh, to take place in great Britain on March 26, and it'll be taking place at Kew gardens in Richmond, uh, in the United kingdom. And she is scheduled, I think in about a week, uh, maybe a, a little less from now when, uh, this airs, um, to go, you know, to fly out there to, to continue her training, um, in London. So everybody, um, Everybody's pulling for Bex, and I know she she posted just recently on Instagram. She was doing some training, and she just barely missed her five minute mile average that she was working on. But I mean, like she's a she's a beast, so I have no doubt she will she'll she'll do us proud and make the team. She is a beast. How unbelievable is that, right? I mean, it's it is pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing, and I know she had she's certainly done tons and tons of marathons, um, you know, oh, yeah. locally, etc. But um, yeah, definitely amazing. not her first. Definitely not her first rodeo. Sure, sure. So in, no, in two thousand, really... just one little tidbit. In two thousand nineteen, yeah. she ran the New York City Marathon in two hours and thirty seven minutes and one second, and she uh, wow. set a new twelve minute <laughs> PR for herself. So I mean, that's give you an idea how fast she is. That's pretty damn fast. That, that is insane. I mean, well, she's this tiny little thing. So she's yeah. kind of like this bullet that just kind of flies out there. And she's you, a machine. Uh, yeah. Wow. Good. Wow. Well, good luck to Bex. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing how that, you know, that pans out um, for us down the road. That's amazing. Good, good yeah. job. Excellent. Well, John, it wouldn't be a Pillow Buddy TV episode without us reporting on a rumor, right? <laughs> and we've um, it's the TMZ. We, Is this the TMZ segment? We're we're the TMZ of of, of Peloton, absolutely. Um, but we have heard through our trusted resource. There we go, Bob Tremor, yeah. um, that it seems that Peloton have possibly acquired a software company called Aquido. Um, according to Aquido's LinkedIn page, they are the most versatile white label voice to action platform that enables brands to build their own custom voice experiences. Um, what makes us suspicious of this acquisition is that a large percentage of Aquido staff have actually changed their workplace on LinkedIn um, to Peloton. So uh, yeah. if you kind of go over to, you know, if you know who they are and you go over to Aquido and you look up whatever, you'll see that they had worked at Aquido and now are, um, and now are Peloton employees. According, according to Bob, um, there are 19 of them. So I believe they had a staff of 30. Um, mm. And 19 of them are now um, Peloton employees. Um, so I guess the question that folks are asking is, you know, what's the benefit to Peloton? Um, yeah. Assuming that they have, in fact, acquired this company. Um, and it seems that it will give Peloton a boost of software developers. Um, there are also a number of ways Peloton could integrate um, the AI voice technology into the platform. Um, one really cool option, John, uh, would be adding voice interface, which would then allow members um, to look for workouts using one's voice. Um, for example, hey, Peloton, find me a 30-minute Broadway ride with Leanne Hainsby. Um, <laughs> Hmm. And potentially that would then, you know, that would then pop up. Um, something else I had I had read and learned was um, about how being able to adjust one's resistance um, using one's voice as well. So uh, maybe maybe not on a hit ride, but certainly <laughs> if you're doing a, you know, you're doing a regular ride, and you know, hey Peloton, you know, take me to fifty resistance. 
Um, so, I mean, certainly an amazing feature if that does end up, you know, does end up becoming, going into fruition. Um, I'm certainly excited, you know, to see where that one goes. Yeah, so John, while we're on the rumor mill, um, did Cody Rigsby spill the beans on a possible new Peloton Adidas apparel collection? Um, we actually saw a straight to on demand class that had landed up on the platform um, on Sunday in which Cody had teased the possible Adidas Peloton collection. Um, during the ride, our good old faithful Cody had said, this ride is all about, not all about, but is a celebration of the launch of our new Adidas Peloton collection. Do you like it? Isn't it cute? Doesn't the pink look good on me? Um, I think so, and I think it'll look good on you. Um, very, very interesting. So um, what, what we actually were also able to see was we were able to go ahead and preview some of the items on Google. So if someone had typed in site um, colon footy, F-O-O-T-Y dot com, Adidas X Peloton, and hit images, you can actually see the items um, right on there. Um, Adidas did allude to the fact this past week too in a press release that they that there is going to be some kind of collaboration with Peloton. So um, while I don't think, um, what I think ended up happening probably was that this was, as we said, an on-demand class that um, wasn't meant to maybe be released quite yet. And um, who knows, did an intern maybe leak it by mistake? <laughs> Um, or, yeah. you know, or, was Co or was Cody spilling the beans? Who knows? Um, but in any case, um, Adidas had referenced um, their collaboration with Peloton um, in a press release. So certainly something, um, certainly something to, to look forward to. Um, I guess for those folks that are sitting with some um, referral codes and like the Adidas, um, Ad Ad you know, Adidas sportswear, certainly hang on to them because if those come out, um, th there would be some great stuff. I did actually go online um, and take a look at some of the stuff and it looks cool did you have a chance to take a look at it yeah there's a couple men's pieces that i really like a lot that i'll probably scoop up so jackie was nice enough to give me a couple of her referral codes oh, so, so cool. uh, i'm i'm yeah i'm waiting i'll, I'll definitely yeah. burn them on on this drop whenever it comes well, what was interesting was, I, I, you know, everyone remembers when um, Nike had their collaboration, um, you know, I believe it was sometime last year um, that they came out, but that was only actually in the U.S., so I think the Adidas, um, from what I'm understanding and from what we can see from some of the speculation, is that it will probably be, um, you know, throughout the, the pet, yeah, all markets throughout the platform. So, so even, um, even Canada, hopefully, will they won't get the yeah. shaft like they yeah, usually maybe. do. <laughs> right, right, and certainly the UK, because I know some of the UK folks were, were frustrated that they couldn't get the, um, as we say in America, Nike, as maybe the Brits say Nike. <laughs> Nike. Nike. Um, right, right, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so um, certainly for something to, uh, for us to look out for, and I think that's quite exciting. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, we have a new uh, Power Zone program, Amanda, uh, yeah. for you Power Zone, you PZ lovers. So Peloton has revamped their program called Discover Your Power Zone, and they have a new set of classes over a five-week program. So uh, it's being taught by all four of our Power Zone instructors, Dennis, Christine, Olivia, and Matt Wilpers. Um, and you can find a full list of classes and the suggested schedule for each week um, on Peloton, or you can see it on Pelo Buddy on our website. And if you're curious about what to expect um, on each specific ride, you can see a preview of the structure of them for each one or for each workout using our free home fitness Pelo Buddy Power Zone library and timing tool. So it'll show you a, a preview graph of the structure. And then if you want, you can run the timer on your phone to, to show you when those zone changes happen uh, during the workout. So, um, I know I don't think you're super big into Power Zone, Amanda, as I'm not either, but I do take them every now and then. But I know uh, a lot, there's a pretty large uh, following of, of fanatical Power Zone um, and our, faithful our beloved, riders. Yep, our beloved Chris Lewis, our pedal buddy, um, um, 
head <laughs> um, is a big is a big power zone is a big power zone writer. But um, yeah, you know, it, it is something that I, I do feel I need to do because I am really struggling on my rides. I'm really really struggling to you know keep up the endurance and keep up yeah. the um, the cadence. And I and I think that that will hopefully. Yeah, and in fact, we interviewed Jeff Hyam, who's on, you know, part of the Power Zone group with Chris, and, you know, he's been pushing me, and every now and again, he'll send me a message and say, hey, Amanda, you know, when are you, when are you starting? But um, I just haven't, uh, yeah, I, I just haven't had, I haven't done it. <laughs> just I'm not good. I, I don't know if it's, if it's Power Zone or just like the, the challenges or the programs, but I'm just not good at committing to those um, you know, programs or that spread out yeah. over like, like I did Peloton, like Peloton was super fun. I love doing that Yes, because yes. it actually helped me to branch out and try instructors that I normally Different wouldn't things. be apt to like Eric Yeager, who I loved in, in the German uh, side. But, um, yeah, I just uh, it, like even, uh, Rebecca Kennedy has this, you know, strength stack. And she said, people who complete uh, all four weeks of it, she's going to select three people to go on Insta Live with her, which I've been wanting to do. And I'm like, oh, I don't even think I can get motivated enough to even, that's not even going to push me to do it. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah so I, it's I, just, I don't know if it's just, I don't want to commit to, or if it's just, I don't know. I think it is a big commitment, but I love the yeah. fact that they constantly give us these tools to work with for those folks that, you know, are on the fence and do want to look at potentially, you know, expanding their horizon. I think that that does give one an opportunity to feel like there's somebody guiding them. Um, and that's certainly what I need. I mean, I certainly need somebody to be able to kind of walk me through and it's nice to be able to have that. So, yeah. um, I mean, it, it's definitely the box is there. I just have to check it off. Um, so who but knows, I see maybe at some point. A lot of people ask, and I've seen, and people have asked me, uh, when I've done little Q and A's on Instagram, they said, how do I get, how do I improve my outfit? How do I get stronger on the bike? And I've told them, you got to incorporate strength and power yeah. zone definitely helps yeah. because you stay in a certain range at a certain output range for specific periods of time. And that over over the long run will build your endurance and increase your output and help make you stronger. So yeah, um, it's definitely, it's definitely great for that. Yeah, interesting. So definitely something that, um, and, I, and as I said, I like the fact that Peloton continued to give us these you know, tools to work with so that it allows us to potentially try these different things. Yeah, and, um, and help keep us engaged and, and motivate us. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, again, Peloton being who they are, what we actually, the next news story, John, is, is quite, I mean, it would be, we, I'd be shocked if we hadn't been on there or if Peloton hadn't been on there. Um, but Peloton was actually named as one of the most innovative wellness companies um, in 2021. Um, and that was on fastcompany.com. Um, they were with the likes of um, Tonal, Calm, and Aura, um, just to name a few. Uh, mm. The website had stated that while um, the world had shut down, folks looked for ways to feel healthier, happier, and less stressed. And it was the wellness brands like Peloton that showed off their endurance and flexibility. Um, the, the website had gone on to say that it was these companies that had managed to keep consumers interested and engaged in their health um, whilst remaining at home and there's no tr you know there's no better I mean come on we've, we've all seen that that folks really got motivated to um, stick with the platform and folks like Tonal and the, the Aura Ring um, there were 10 that were on there um, mm. and so the Peloton was actually the top one it was the number one so that was good to good to see yeah isn't Calm the isn't it a sleep app where you can listen it is. to it's soothing like a meditation. raindrops? Exactly. Yeah, I've I've yeah. seen that in it's popped up in my ads on social. Yeah, yeah. And I guess those were all kind of the things we needed to, um, you know, as as this pandemic, you know, moved on. And I believe we are the, you know, at the at that point we're at the one year mark, right? That the world shut down this weekend a year yeah. ago was um, was when. You know, I think everything pretty much came to a screeching halt across the entire world. 
Uh, and here we are a year later. And again, you know, we, you and I have certainly said this time and time again, if it wasn't for our Peloton and the community and the platform and the engagement, um, gosh, who knows, you know, who knows where we would have been. So I'm certainly very grateful uh, for it. No question. Well, it was one year ago and I have a friend on Insta remind me because he posted a photo from in the studio and Allie loves class from a year ago on March 12th. And he said oh. the next day, the next day we went into lockdown and that's when they closed 23rd street early before they were scheduled to move to the new, to right. the new massive, uh, studio that they're in now. Right. So, right. yeah. Well, yeah, well, it was actually a, last weekend was my last ride in the studio. I had done my, uh, my 300th ride with, um, 300th or 400th? Anyway, with Kendall, uh, 400. Uh, it was my 400th ride with Kendall that I did in live in studio. Um, and I remember taking, I took my mom and I, I took her to New York for the weekend. And I remember us <laughs> being like a little bit nervous because we had heard about this virus. And, you yeah. know, I, I remember going into one of the one of the restaurants that I love there, the Smith, and they had like wiped down the um, they had wiped down the menus, and you know there was no masks, there was none of the social distancing, but people were certainly aware that this was you know was kind of brewing. And I had yeah. been in New York that weekend, um, and that was my last ride. And I remember saying that my five hundred my five hundredth ride was going to be in the new in the new studio. And then a week <laughs> later, you're right, it it got shut down and. You know, we never, it was, uh, well, something to look forward to, right? I mean, certainly once things do go back to normal, that is going to be something that we'll all look forward to is getting back. I'm sure it's going to be strange for the instructors though, right? Getting back into the studio and having folks in the class with them. Because for a year, they've taught these classes without us there. Yeah, I, I kind of wonder, I'm sure they're, they're excited to have that element back. Because I know a lot of them, I guess we'll, we'll go, they go out live on Insta afterwards. Whereas if, um, if they had people in the studio, they'd probably spend that time chatting and taking pictures yes. after their class. But it's funny. I've, I've connected with so many instructors in the past year that I've kind of gotten to know virtually. And it, it'll just be funny when I finally get to meet them. Cause I feel like Rebecca Kennedy and Andy Spear on the tread, tread and strength side, I feel like they're like my new besties and we're always yeah. like, we're always gabbing and, and direct messaging back and forth. And it's just funny that I've never actually met them. So right. I was, I was messaging with Rebecca recently. And I said, it's going to be really funny when I finally meet you in person. Cause I'm going to totally surprise you. I'm not going to give you any heads up and just one day I'm going to just be pop there. up there. I'm just <laughs> going to pop up in the studio. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. And yeah. I have to say, I mean, it is going, and again, from that same perspective, it's the community. I mean, I have, I've said this before, I've made so many friends in the community that I've oh, never yeah. met and I mean, I speak to every day. Um, so for us to be able to ride together and be in studio together, um, it, it's, it's, you know, fantastic. So yeah. I'm looking really for it, but it is going to be a different dynamic. And how does that look? You know, how will that look when we all get back into the studio? You know, is it going to be that social distancing? Are we going to be able to meet the instructors afterwards? Are people going to be nervous? You know, there's still, there's so much unknown, right? That we have to just wait and see. Um, yeah. So it's, it's going to be somewhat interesting to see how they structure um, once, you know, folks are allowed back into the studio. I mean, based on how things are now progressing with vaccinations, I just want to know, do we think the studio will actually open in 2021 or are we, are we looking at, at this point, 2022 at some point? I mean, personally, I do think that it will open. I mean, I think that if things do go according to plan, um, you know, and, and folks, more and more folks do get vaccinated, um, then, you know, maybe they would towards the end of the year, you know, yeah. who knows. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, how do they do that? Are they going to, you know, are we going to have to walk around with cards that say we vaccinated and then we're able to, you know, I don't know yeah. what that, none of us know what that's going to look like, right? Um, but certainly, I know I was looking at booking a trip and, um, you know, the, the, the woman that I was chatting to that was helping me had said to me that, you know, one of the things that this particular place that I was looking at would be asking for vaccination records and whether we had been vaccinated, which I thought was interesting. And this wasn't until, you know, until the, the end of the summer. Um, right. But maybe that's going to be something that's going to be required. You know, who knows? This is all such an unknown. 
Um, but yeah, we went off on a tangent there. But you know, anything that comes <laughs> up with the studio and Peloton, I'm really excited just, to talk about. I'm just right? longing. I know. I'm just <laughs> longing to finally to to see them all. As sure, I'm, I'm sure they they miss us just as much and and want to get back to that that face, to, even with them, you know, each other, because yeah, you know, yeah. they're so socially distanced now. They're not all hanging out together out, like outside of the studio. To. Yeah, at gatherings and parties. So I'm sure you know they're they're longing for it just as much as we are. So. Right, right. Yeah, so uh, tell us some news, some news on the instructors. We have quite a bit there. Yeah, so Kendall and Olivia Amato, Kendall Tool and Olivia, just recently signed with talent agencies. So Olivia joined a talent agency called the Montag Group. And, uh, you know, they represent ath- ath- athletes, um, you know, finding them partnerships and brands to, to represent that fit in with their you know, their lifestyle, their beliefs. And Kendall joined a talent agency called Stoked Management Group, and they represent world-class athletes and brands. So I'm sure we'll be seeing some new collaborations and partnerships, I'm sure, on on social media with, you know, companies or products that they might want to rep and promote. Yeah, I mean, maybe some commercials or yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that means like TV and film, or if it's just, you know, brands, but it would be kind of fun to see them in a a TV commercial for something, you know, like, like Cody with, with General Motors oh, and their, Emma, their new Emma electric with, vehicle and, and the Super Emma Bowl. Emma with um, yeah. the Super Bowl. Yeah. 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 What so was the, what was, was the commercial? True Green. True Green um, yes. The lawn. Scott's, the lawn thing. Yeah. Yeah. The lawn, yeah. Um, the lawn thing, which was, which was great. It was so awesome to, to see that. Um, so talking about the instructors, John, Tunde actually appeared on the Today Show. Um, this past week with Hoda and Jenna, um, and we got to hear all about dead butt syndrome. Did you even know that was a thing? <laughs> I didn't know that was the term, but I, I watched it. It was kind of funny whenever they said that. Right, right. But apparently it is absolutely a, it is a syndrome where, you know, with all of us uh, sitting all day um, and how it can really take a toll on our, on our glutes. Um, so, you know, I guess while this whole working from home um, gig, you know, had its perks, um, folks certainly found themselves, you know, slouched on a, cat on a sofa, working from their beds or sitting around at their desk all day. Whereas I think when one's in an office, you tend to get up more often, whether it's to go, you know, to the cooler, the water cooler, and you get to, you know, chat to your, you know, your, your, um, your colleagues there. Um, yeah. But certainly um, you're moving around more. I think in an office than one would be at at home. So the Today Show had asked Tunde um, for some advice um, on how one can keep their glutes active, and she had both Je- uh, both Hoda and Jenna doing the exercises with her. They had also taken um, there were about six. Um, viewers that they had gotten, um, and it was all done via Zoom. Um, Tunde was in her apartment, and um, the six viewers were in their apartments or homes, um, and they had everybody on doing, um, you know, doing these exercises. Um, Tunde's mantra is prevent, stretch, stretch, active, and strength. Activate, excuse me, activate and strength. Um, so she had suggested some of the things that she had suggested was basically standing at a desk. So I know that these um, standing desks have become, you know, the norm. People are really like those. I mean, even before the pandemic, people were oh, utilizing yeah. those standing Ergonomic. desks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but she was saying, you know, that was something that she would recommend or um, even working at a breakfast bar, you know, in a kitchen. She said mm. that's what she does. She uses her breakfast bar where, you know, she can stand the up island. and kind of yeah. move around. Yeah, exactly. Um, she also said that one should definitely stretch before and after a workout, making sure that you're getting um, your stretch in. And one of the stretches that she had recommended was that half kneeling hip stretch, um, which she says kind of opens up the um, hip flexors. Mm. Um, as far as activating, um, a glute bridge was what was suggested. And she had them both on their backs. 
um, doing, you know, on mats on their backs. And Jenna turned around and said, um, and that's Jenna Bush. Jenna turned around and said, I'm not sure what this angle looks like on TV, folks. So I'm apologizing now. And of course, <laughs> Tunde looked phenomenal. I mean, yeah. she has a body to die for. I mean, what an incredible body. Um, and then for strengthening, a lateral lunge is what she had suggested. Um, but you know, John, I absolutely love Tunde's enthusiasm and um, her energy. Um, she was pretty amazing on that segment. And that is something that I've always noted about her. She's so upbeat. She's so, you know, gung-ho. And she was, I mean, she never gave, she never gave them a minute. They were trying to like talk and she was like telling them exactly what to do. <laughs> she wasn't, I mean, you said you saw that, you saw the segment, yeah. uh, but I thought she was, I thought she was fantastic. So that was fun. Yeah. I like, I like those. They've been, Doing the Today Show, I, I like how Peloton's been appearing on the Today Show a lot, it seems, lately. A lot, yeah. I mean, it's always fun. I, I'd like to see more of, uh, I always feel like the cycle instructors get all, all the fame and the love. It would be fun to see some of the tread, you know, well, Jess Sims has been Agreed. on, but I'd love to see Rebecca or Andy or Selena or Adrian or Chase, um, you know, get on one of those segments one of yeah. these days. Yeah, John. So interestingly, actually, Bex was on um, Canadian TV. She was on breakfast television this past week. And funny, we spoke about her earlier, but she was um, she spoke about movement and I guess keeping one's body moving in, in the pandemic. But so, yeah, so so she got her, her, her little bit of fame and that was in <laughs> Canada. Um, but yeah, I think it would be fun to see some of more some more of the, um, the strength and the tread. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yes, but Vex was on a Canadian show. So, yeah. Very cool. Well, uh, in other news, instructor news, Jess King was in People Magazine just recently. Um, it was, uh, the article was titled Jess King on ruling the fitness world and planning for the future with her fiance. And she mentioned uh, way back before Jess became involved in fitness, how she hadn't worked out in two years. And this was after a bad breakup. Um, and then how she kind of started her movement back up with yoga, dancing and strength. And then she focused on her diet and incorporating plant-based foods. And then the next step was therapy. She went into a lot of, uh, psychotherapy, you know, after her breakup and dealing with a lot of things there. And then, uh, she went into talking about her wellness program, which I actually wasn't aware if she had one, but it's called mindful and also talked about becoming a certified life coach, which I, I didn't even know this whole side of Jess King. So um, it was some interesting, um, you know, discussion around that. And she um, also talked about taking some time off from teaching, as it seems a lot of instructors have been taking a bit of a leave lately, um, just like Jess Sims has been uh, uh, off, uh, taking some extended time off now uh, from teaching. Um, but also she said she and her fiance don't have, um, Sophia, who was actually, um, a contestant on the voice. I wasn't even aware her fiance, Sophia is, oh, wow. uh, she's, uh, an artist, uh, a composer, songwriter and singer. Um, I don't know what season she was on, but yeah, it said she was a contestant and they don't have a wedding date, uh, set yet, but, um, they're not in any hurry, I guess. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't I used to watch The Voice, but I didn't know that Sophia was on there. They're an yeah. amazing couple. But you know, it's interesting that you said that about taking time off. Because you know, I assume people would have gone on vacation, right? We're a year down the road and people didn't, you know, go off to, you know, on vacation. So they do need, I mean, you can't just keep going. You know, yeah, they, I constantly. guess they just need to unplug. Well, somebody had messaged me and said, Hey, can you discuss, you know, on your upcoming episode? Why all the why are all the instructors taking off right now? Because like Jen Sherman, she's yes. been off for a while, like for the past couple of weeks, and she hasn't said anything. She's kind of been um, radio silent about it. So obviously, everyone in the JSS tribe is kind of concerned, um, and she's now scheduled to to teach um, when this the, the morning of when this episode comes out. Um, and then Jess Sims, she said she was taking some time off. She was listening to her body. And now she's recently said on social that she was taking some more time off. And Jess King is taking time off. And Allie had taken a little bit of time off. And Maddie, too, took right. some family time. And he's just coming back on Monday for his first live class back. So, 
Yeah, like you said, they're not they're not taking their normal vacations that they normally be taking throughout the year. So I guess they just need that time to unplug and sort of right, right. And it's got to be exhausting. You know, I think it's got to be exhausting. I mean, this is as we've said before. There's a lot that goes into um, them, you know, curating their workout. You know, whether it be yeah. on the tread or the bike or the floor, whatever they're doing. You know, they put a ton of effort. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm pleased that they, you know, and again, I think Peloton. Um, and, and in my ne- in my la- in the last story, I'll talk about this because John Foley did say this. But I think Peloton really do take care of their employees. Um, and they want to see them, you know, fit and healthy and, and want to be, you know, enthused and engaged with, with the members. So I think it's um, I think it's important. Yeah. And I think also I, I didn't even realize and I'm sure plenty of people don't realize kind of how much they do behind the scenes in terms of yeah. their job, because a lot of people could easily just think they go to the studio, they teach, they put together their playlist and then they're done but they're doing all sorts of like zoom meetings all like, cause I'm messaging, you know, when I'm, when I'm chatting with Rebecca and Andy on their Insta live, Andy's joking, like I have review work to do. That's what they call their, you know, their paperwork and, and busy work for their, their Peloton jobs. And I'm like, Oh, what do you got some Mario Kart to play? And Rebecca's always <laughs> telling me how like, no, I have a five. Like I asked her on my recent milestone. I said, Hey, do you want to, you know, if you want to join me for my milestone ride with Cody at 5 PM, she's like, no, I've got a, got a zoom meeting for work so uh, they're they're pretty busy when they're not teaching busy. you know with their yeah. jobs yeah so they got a lot yeah. on their plate right. so. i think and, and of course then they've got all these extra side things that they're doing so add that right. into the mix and they have a pretty full it's schedule pretty packed. they have yeah you know, pretty packed schedule yeah well they're all led by um by their you know, their guru, John Foley. And um, it was actually interesting, John, because he did feature um, on Chris Wallace's Sunday morning um, news news, uh, show um, on Fox. And Chris had named him Power Player of the Week. I guess each week there's somebody um, that does that does feature, and John Foley was on this past week, um, and it was actually kind of cute. My my parents, I was coming back from New York on Sunday, and my mom had messaged me and said, "Amanda, Amanda, the CEO of Peloton is on." <laughs> Dad just told me she got so excited, and I'm like, "Okay, mom." <laughs> and um, I did actually. I had asked I had asked my husband to record it, um, and then it did show up on Twitter. I had seen both. John John, um, both John and Chris Wallace had posted it on their Twitter um, feeds, but um, but but John had um, had said how sometimes he needs to pinch himself um, and that he can't quite believe how the product exploded. Uh, you know, he's just such a cool guy, and I think the way you know, I I I, I do think he's humbled. I mean, my my impression of him is that he's a pretty humble guy. Um, you know, he spoke. I mean, obviously. Chris Wallace pushed him a little bit, and and he he did speak of the 130 percent growth year over year, uh, which which Wallace retorted and and said, um, yeah, I made you a billionaire. Uh, yeah, which yeah. He actually got he got embarrassed. He, you know, he yeah, he goes, well, that's on paper. And, yeah, he goes, well, on right, paper, exactly. you could say that. Yeah, he, he nervously ch- yeah, he like yeah. nervously chuckled and, and said, you know, exactly that. But he, you know, he did say that he was he wasn't in it for the money, and that as you said, you know, on paper. It looked, you know, yeah, that's he is a billionaire, um, but that he he did it for the right reasons, and I truly believe, you know, I truly do believe that um, he did also speak about, you know, how him and Jill did get started, and that they were both such fitness, you know, fanatics, um, and that finding classes had always been something that was frustrating for him, and you know, we we all know the story how he hated the idea of, you know, having to find parking or going into a studio or booking a, you know, booking a class and. You know, it had to fit into a certain time, and that was kind of how he came up with this, you know, absolutely phenomenal um, concept. Um, but he, you know, he he said that that you know how for decades fitness equipment. Um, at home was all about a piece of hardware, right? That collected dust and Coat acted hanger. as yep. the proverbial clothes horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, so you know, Wallace of, of course throughout um, uh, said how Peloton had 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 its bumps. So he did he did mention he kind of brought that in and said, yeah, you know, Peloton certainly has have had its bumps in the road, um, and and now with obviously the, the infamous commercial. Poor Monica, <laughs> she is. I don't think. She 
she will ever truly be able to be rid of the poor wife stigma, right? <laughs> um, but but John laughed, you know. John laughed and and said, uh, you know, I guess we all know, um, you know, that he he certainly has had the last laugh. Uh, there's no question that that commercial, you know, absolutely skyrocketed the uh, the business for him. Um, yeah. And you know, he 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 did obviously, you know, alert it and say that he had no, he would never have thought that it would have had the reaction that it did. Um, and then lastly, um, he went on to say that how he hopes that he can continue to grow membership. Um, his goal is being over 100 million members. Uh, you know, that's that's what he's looking at as far as a, you know, a, a, an ultimate goal. Um, but he did also state, and this is what I kind of mentioned, I alluded to, he had stated that one of his absolute goals is to make Peloton the best place to work. Um, mm. So, so I, you know, there's no question that that it is probably the best place to work. It's certainly for you and I, right? <laughs> we would, we would absolutely, we would absolutely love, you know, love it. Um, and then, lastly, and quite humorously, uh, Wallace acknowledged the bike behind John um, in the video shot, uh, which John said how he and Jill fight over, fight over it. Those <laughs> early morning classes, I was just going to bring right? up. Yeah, I was just going to bring that. Those six a.m. Um, <laughs> and Wallace, Wallace turned around and said, um, "Well, isn't it about time that you kind of got a second bike um, I, sure I think you can, can get, get a deal, deal. yeah <laughs> Um, so I, yeah, I, did, I didn't think that was interesting they don't have two bikes like seriously but I <laughs> guess they don't um, yeah. you know I from that I guess they don't so um it was it was a fun you know it was just a very candid fun um you know, uh, laid back interview and um, I do always love listening to to John Foley um, being interviewed because I think he is just such a humble guy. Um, so yeah. I like that. I thought it was so, funny yeah. in, a, in a recent interview with John Foley, he has the new tread, the smaller sized, lower cost one. Yeah. And he lives, you know, he and Jill live in somewhere in New York city. So they obviously have limited space. And he, he said he had the new tread sort of sticking out of a doorway in their, oh, I don't know, their, the basement or the lower, the lowest level of their apartment because they just, their space is so limited, but yeah, that's how, that's how they make do. Too funny. Yeah. So I don't know, that's maybe they saying. can't He's squeeze a second guy. bike in there. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Probably due to space limitations. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. So but down the road, maybe we'll, we'll see him. Um, we'll see him in somewhere new with um, all the toys. Yeah. Maybe, th- maybe things out. picks, maybe things pick up for you, John, you can get a second bike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when that rower comes out, cause you know, he's going to want to have that rower in there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I guess, John, that takes us to our picks of the week. Yeah. Do you want to go first? I do want to go first. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. Because you know what my pick of the week is, boo? Is it Leah? Oh, is it Cody's or is it Leanne's? Oh, it's Cody's 45 minute pop ride that uh. my <laughs> co host took on his 3,000th ride on. Um, John, I, I'm serious. That was just amazing. Thank you. I mean, to think, it, it's truly, you know, amazing. It's an amazing accomplishment, and you should be really, really proud of yourself. But it was amazing. I loved hearing. Um, I had jumped on late, so I didn't hear the pre-show until you until you put it on social, uh, which I did have to chuckle about. I mean, how did he call you out on that? <laughs> Is that what it happened? Is that what it happened? You had jumped on another ride and read under the three thousand. So I, I always try to record the pre-show for Cody, even when I'm not writing. Yes. Because somebody always messages me and says, hey, do you, so I try to be, you know, to help people out, especially in the boo crew, because uh, a lot of people just, they don't have the technology savvy to screen record or, or think about doing that. So I try to, you know, when I have it, I try to send it to them. But uh, I, had, I was in the basement, I think, just watching something on TV. So I quickly went on my phone because I realized there was a live class a couple nights before my milestone ride. Yeah. And then I think even before the, the pre-show began and the, the class went live, I realized I was on my profile. Oh. And so that and I was waiting to take my milestone ride. My next cycling class would be 3000 with him the next day. So I quickly exited, deleted that app ride and then logged into my dummy account that I used to record everything from. Got it. And so he must've, when he was getting ready to go live, he must've seen it there for a split second 
And then when the next day at that, that 45 minute pop ride, he mentioned that in the pre-show, he's like, you, you, you jumped on last night. I saw you, I saw that 3000 and it disappeared. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to call you out. <laughs> I mean, only Cody, I was laughing because I was like, only Cody could call you out. You know, none of the yeah. others would, would, you know, be <laughs> well, a lot of times, a lot of times when he's, he's given me milestone shout outs in the pre-show, a lot of times he'll go, he goes, I don't, I don't know, Kenny, you, you just celebrated last week. I think you're rigging yes. the system. I think you're just watching rides. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. That is too funny. Yeah. So, yeah, John, so that is my pick of the week. Um, you know, I think I've told you before, I don't ride a ton with Cody. Um, and, and I certainly don't ride at that time of the day. And my friend. I don't either. I, yeah. it, it was all in the spirit of John Pruitt. Hashtag Kenny Bania. I rode because of, you were doing your 3000th ride. And I appreciate you telling me because I really was happy that I got to celebrate with you. It does mean a lot to me. You know, as you know, these milestones do, do I do make a big deal out of them. And it was fun to be able to ride with you. So I appreciate you sharing with me that you were doing your, your ride. And I waited until the evening to do it. Um, but it, it was hard AF. Yeah. Oh, my God. One. I literally thought that I was going to puke at the end of that ride. His it rides, was a tough ride. He's, he's, his rides have been t uh, on the tougher side lately. He's really been giving us some, some heavy intervals and, you know, right? a, a lot of, I guess, Tabata type, you know, spin ups. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a lot I mean, it was awesome. It, it was, you know, it was great. It was, and, yeah. And it was still I, a great playlist. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I got a great output, but I have to tell you, I don't know if it was because it was later in the you know in the day or um, just you know not you you know not used to riding with him. Um, but that was my pick of the week. I thought the music the music was great. Um, loved the music, and um, it was fun to ride ride with Cody and of course ride with you. So uh, yeah. that well, was my pick of the week. Thanks for for joining. I don't ride that late either, but I really wanted a, at least a forty five minute class to do you know, such a big milestone because yeah. I really wanted to yeah. save, you know, have a nice long ride. And, awesome. uh, and there was way less people on it at that time too. And he even mentioned in the pre-show, he's like, Oh, I'm actually going to be able to get through all these milestones. Cause this time there's, there's way less riders apparently at 5 PM Eastern time. So. Yeah. So one of the things that I noticed about him though, is he doesn't call out the numbers. I mean, for the big numbers, obviously for yours, he did say 3000, but there are a couple of instructors that do that that just kind of fire, which, which is great because you get to hear your, you know, you get to hear your leaderboard name and, and they can get through way more, um, you know, way more of the, of the yeah. milestones, but yeah. he doesn't. So I didn't like know where he was as far as if I was trying to see if anyone else was doing a milestone. It was, yeah. it was hard to, to hear that. He does. He'll give people shout out. He'll, he'll get through a lot of shout outs in the pre-show. And then a lot of those same people he shouts out in the pre-show where he says their specific milestone number he'll shout them out again during the ride but it'll just be a quick sort of rapid fire got it and that's and, and he just you know quickly goes through it i think he just sticks to miles like he doesn't really do random shout outs just because there's so many people celebrating on his ride so many birthdays so that's his style he's good with it though like he really yeah. he's one of the instructors yeah. that really gets through him like dennis he almost seems flustered when he seems so he sees so many milestones it doesn't you know get to a, a whole lot a lot of times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, my picks of the week. Yeah. So I've got two for tread and bike. So uh, another Cody one. So Cody's most recent tread boot camp, 30 minute tread boot camp. It's his Little Mix artist series. So Little Mix is an all girl pop band from the UK. They were, uh, they won um, uh, Simon Cowell's uh, UK X Factor, I want to say. A while yes. back they've been around for about 10 years and they're still together which is surprising because all these girl groups all these bands seem to, to break up eventually uh but he loves little mix so he was super into this ride and the boot camp was um it was tough it was a body boot camp no weights uh, but a lot of fun and their music is really fun you, you'll probably recognize it if you've never heard of them or You'll know some of their songs once you hear it, but that was a lot of fun. 30 minute bike boot camp with Cody from Friday the 12th. And then I just did my first run with Bex Gentry uh, this past week, her 30 minute endurance run on Tuesday the 9th. Um, and that was hard. 
I had never done, I had never done an endurance run before. And I had just recently connected with Bex a couple weeks ago. She reshared one of my posts, which was Cody related. And then she started following me on Instagram and I followed her back and then we were messaging and uh, I was like, are you Australian? She goes, no, I'm English. I was like, all right, well, you give me, you give me Olivia Newton, John vibes. And she, she got a big kick out of that. And um, so I was messaging, I was telling her to, you know, I was saying, oh, you should play this one song on your upcoming run. She played a song request for me on this endurance run. Um, So she she gave me, when it came on, she goes, this one's for you, Prue. (laughs) Some, some instructors like to call me Prue now, apparently. That's my, that. that, that's my yeah, nickname yeah, yeah, with Re- yeah. Rebecca Kennedy, especially. <laughs> uh, but it was a Haley Steinfeld song that I really like called I Love Yous, and it's sampled from an Annie, Annie Lennox song. Annie Lennox okay. from the, the Rhythmics. Uh, but I didn't realize okay. that there are no recoveries in an endurance run. So yeah. you're just running the whole time. Uh. Um, so it was challenging. I'd never done one of those before. I don't know if I'm going to do one again. Uh, but I told her it was really tough. I was like, where are the recoveries? And she goes, there are none in endurance. And I said to myself, Christ, Olivia Newton, John's trying to kill me. (laughs) (laughs) And she was, she was cracking up. Uh, but it was, it was a lot of fun though. So I'm I'm glad I I did kind of got out of my comfort zone. So, and I really like her. She was, she's fun. She shouts out people, um, you know, on the leaderboard just randomly. So I, I like her nice. vibe. I like, I liked her style. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I got to, I got to up my game here, John, and get on my tread. Um, so I can <laughs> give you guys, so I can give you guys all some picks of, of the week for me on the tread. So that's yeah. something I think I'm going to have to start doing. Definitely. Get, get with Definitely. that boot camp program. I know. I know. Well, there, I guess, folks, that's it. We are um, wrapping up. Um, it was, yeah, another, I, I didn't think it was going to be a lot of news, and it turned out to be a lot of news. You and I can probably just, you know, talk away forever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Go on tangent after tangent. Right, exactly, exactly. But um, I guess that's about it, folks. Um, yeah, so we actually do not have an interview this week. Um, we are saving it up for a really good one coming up soon, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but sometimes I think that with a lot of news, um, and I think having an interview as well tends to be a little overwhelming. So um, we promise, um, we'd love to hear, as John said at the beginning of the show, I mean, we'd love to hear what you guys recommend and who you'd like to see. So if you have somebody that you'd like to hear about um, or hear from, let us know, and we can certainly reach out and see if um, they'd be interested in coming on the show. So um, yeah. definitely um, share that information with us. But I believe that is it for us, folks. So um, for me here in Maryland this week, um, bye for now. And from here, from me here in Michigan, we will all see you on the leaderboard. And till next time, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for watching Pillow Buddy TV, your source for everything Peloton, by the community, for the community. Work out with us using the Pillow Buddy TV leaderboard tag and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pillow Buddy. Don't forget that we have a podcast available so that you can listen to us while on the move. Just search for Pillow Buddy TV on any major platform and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.